15 minutes around. All right, hi everyone. This is Gilberto from Maverick Media Lab and I'm on here with Justin, one of our clients in Washington. And he's gonna talk about what, he's, what his experience has been with Maverick Media Lab and we're talking to realtors and all of the different things that, that come with that. So Justice, welcome on. I really, really appreciate your time. I know it's like a Tuesday right after July 4th. So I really, really do appreciate you hopping on and, and sharing your time and, and you know sharing your experience with us and the feedback. Um, so welcome on, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. And yeah, so just kind of like introduce yourself a bit, like who you are, um, how long you've been in the industry, a little bit more, just kind of background <clears throat> on yourself. Yeah. So um, my name is Justice. I've been in uh, mortgage for almost 10 years, uh, originating for about seven and um, we built our business, you know, one customer at a time. Really, our uh, value proposition has just been taking such great care of our clients and partners and communicating at a high level and making the process simple and easy and always finding solutions and all of that stuff. And, you know, that's uh, given us the ability to grow our team in production. Um, you know, last last couple of years, we did about a hundred million, a um, little over a hundred million this last year and a little, little less than that the year before. And, you know, uh, it's, it's been a fun ride to build a team and um, provide value to our clients. Congrats on success. Love it. Thank awesome. you, bro. And <clears throat> yeah, like what, before, like we started working together, what was the situation with, with getting more realtor partners? Like, tell us about like, what was like the main bottleneck stopping you from from growing that that partnership base, yeah, I I think the main the main thing um, for a lot of years I've focused a lot on consumer direct um, for any of my marketing efforts and really just all the realtor partners that I had worked with is had just been people that I would connect with on one off either transactions or things that would go super well. We do a great job, and I would you know try to explore a relationship and build a partnership that way. But really, a lot of my mindset with prospecting real estate agents was um, way more that it's a waste of time that um, the people that I'm going to talk to are always, you know, they think that they're better than you or whatever. And a lot of that is, you know, was what I found out to be limiting mindsets around, you know, just not talking to enough real estate agents or not talking to the right real estate agents. And so um, going through our coaching, one of the, one of the principles or I guess lessons that they uh, had taught us is delegate what it is that you're not willing to do. So if I wasn't willing or able to make the phone calls to book the appointments, um, then could I have somebody else do that? And I felt like that was a good fit. You know, it's like if, if I wasn't going to find the time or make the time to make the appointments, would I show up to the appointments and I could commit to that? So really it was like, how can I leverage um, another individual or company or team to help me book appointments? Because I do feel like the the value was how can I connect with more real estate agents? And, you know, it's like the idea of kissing more frogs, you know, it's just like the more, you know, maybe you find some that work. And if you have to talk to 20 uh, before you find one, um, at least that one that you've added, you know, is moving you and your business in the right direction. Got it. And were there any other like limiting beliefs that you had as well? Like, or anything kind of similar to that, what you mentioned about the real estate agents that you had, uh, that you had kind of like broken through or kind of shifted um, when it comes to like building more referral partnerships? I, I think more that it's just knowing and seeing that that's the type of uh, business and stability that it is that I want to create for myself, our team. And so it was just like, for me, it was just a decision like, hey, I see value in this. This is the type of business that I want to continue to add. It's more predictable. Um, it's referrals are easier for a team to be able to grow and scale with that, you know, like I, I, for a lot of our other consumer direct uh, models that where it can be very, very uh, workable and doable. And we found some great avenues with that. It still requires a little bit of a higher sales skill level. And, yep. you know, that's hard to find either the right person um, to put into that seat that actually wants to stay in that seat long-term um, so you've got to go find a self-originating uh, loan officer who wants to be able to do that. And those people typically, you know, they're going to want to, you know, from their compensation structure, or all, all, all variety of that, it's easier to scale our team. We have more referrals because our loan partners and the rest of our team can work that business and convert that business at a much higher, higher rate. 
Um, and so that that was important. Got it. Are there any other uh, differences that because I know you've done a lot of consumer direct, as you said, like, are there any other differences that you've noticed, like, from those type of leads that come in to the ones that you got from like the, the referrals, like, I don't know, any specific numbers, like, I guess the close rate or anything like that, that you it, know? I would say we're probably about 35 to 40% um, with uh, real estate agent referrals. That isn't always the case. And sometimes it's, you know, finding those real estate agent referral partners that are vetting those leads and kind of figuring out where they're getting their business from. Um, Cause it isn't always a direct that sometimes it's one out of four or one out of five or one out of six, or if it's one out of 10, you know, and they may be a great referral partner that love you, but like they get all their leads from Zillow. And so that's where they're sending you their business from. Um, that certainly is, you know, a little bit different, but I would say because we do as well as we do um, on our consumer direct stuff, we're probably about 20%, um, anywhere from, I don't know, I would say 17 to 20% in that range for our consumer direct, what we convert at. So it's still, you know, close to double of what we convert with a, a realtor referral. 40 versus, yeah, 17%, huge difference there, especially when you're dealing with a lot of volume, like that's a big difference. And I know that like one thing that stuck out, like even in our first call, you had mentioned to me like, yeah, you had kind of a limiting belief on, you know, like working with realtors and maybe from like, maybe past bad experiences. Like you've been in the industry for like 10 years. What are some things that you've noticed, like just seeing other loan officers in the industry across the years that might've might be stopping them just as a general in the industry um, from growing their referral partnerships? Um, I think the only thing that comes to mind is really like, you don't want to work with every uh, real estate agent, you know, and that, you know, may sound a little bit counter counterintuitive, but like what I found and that, you know, probably other people can relate with as well is like, there is only so much of you to go around. And if you are chasing real estate agents that are not doing as much production or business, it's going to take the exact same amount of energy to build a relationship with somebody who's producing at a higher level. And so where it sounds, you know, you know, maybe harsh or like, hey, these are all really nice people. And that's very true. But when we talk about business resources and time and energy, um, it's important to focus and go after people that are actually doing production and business and put your effort and energy to building those relationships. Um, and so for me, that's been a focus um, is like, as harsh as it may sound, if they're not meeting a certain level of production, unfortunately, it's not worth the time and energy that we have to put into it to generate to have it make sense from a business perspective. And like all the people that do great production or you know enough production to work with us and to build a relationship, those are great people too. Those are nice people. Those are people with awesome families and are building great businesses and have great clients. And so it doesn't mean that you know the other individuals are you know bad people or whatever. But you know, for me, it was like number one, the, the, the people with good production, they actually do exist. They are out there that they actually want to talk to you. They actually want to connect with you. They actually um, want a loan officer as good as you are. They want somebody who's going to be dedicated to them and committed to them. And so um, they're out there. You just have to talk with enough people. And certainly if you have other people that are um, kind of weeding through those phone calls, doing the stuff that you don't want to do to book the appointments um, and, um, that, that's a way to predictably just continue to keep moving, moving the ball downfield and putting um, your energy in the right direction. That's good. And I can tell there's a lot of like, like you've, you've thought about that, like very like thoroughly, like in your approach and your strategy with that. One of the things that we, that I hear a lot, you know, when I talk to other loan officers, when they inquire about our services, like, is like, Hey, like, you know, there's already like a lot of loan officers reaching out to these real estate agents or, you know, they already have a lender. Um, what has been your experience personally over the last 10 years with that? Like, what have you seen with these conversations and meetings that we've, we've been booking for you? Uh, by and large, the best people already do have people that are working with them. Um, you may get lucky as far as like people being, in the, you being in the right place in the right time, um, as far as like where somebody's discouraged from the person that they're working with. And that's why they wanted to connect and meet with you. Um, and there may be other people that are like, hey, I'm good. And you can be like, fantastic. That's great. Like, and I'm a, is it okay with you if I follow up and just check in with you to find out if there's anybody that I can help? 
uh, in the future. And some of it's just that consistency over time, continuing to do your follow-up, continuing to build a relationship, continuing to, you know, send items of value or reason for people to think about you. Cause you know, you know, it's crazy to think, but like most people don't wake in the, wake up in the morning thinking about you. And so what can you do to like be the person that they think about? Like, man, I really had a great conversation with justice and, you know, I am working with this lender, but like six weeks from now, you know, where is justice? Did justice just fall off a map or is he now present now when I'm running into an issue or like I had a weird conversation with my loan officer and I go, you know what? Justice seems like he, he wouldn't be a guy to, kind of guy to do that to me. Why don't I send the next client over to him and somebody that's consistently stayed in touch with me and built a relationship. And sometimes people just want the respect of like, they want to feel important call them, you know, and check in and be meaningful in your conversations and meaningful in your touch points and, you know, be authentic. And, you know, people are attracted to that. And by and large, I think that you win um, with that type of uh, mindset and that type of follow through. Yeah. That's one thing I've found like super consistent with all of our clients that are like really successful in, in like the mortgage industry is like that they think about things in a very different way and like then probably like maybe someone who's just starting off like what you just mentioned like all of our clients that like go on our interviews like this like they all have a really great follow-up they think about things in like the long term with the partnerships as well um and that kind of leads into like the next question here like what what was your um i guess factors in deciding whether to work with us because i know like i'm sure your inbox you know probably gets a lot of like uh, emails from marketing companies, you probably get a lot of calls as well. So what was it that made you decide to work with us as opposed to, you know, doing something else? Yeah, I, I think specifically, it, it was kind of, you know, some of it was being the right place, the right time where I was focusing or really just had this pain point of like, hey, I want to reach out to real estate agents, but I have all these other things going on. I want to book appointments. I want to be able to do that and go and, hey, if I can get consistent appointments that are going to show up in my calendar, um, then that is I'm moving my business down the field every single week. And that was something where it's like, Hey, if I'm not going to do it myself and I can have somebody else do it, you know, that was a huge win for me to go, Hey, that is a solution that's solved. And I think another lesson that I've learned is write, write small checks to cash, big checks. And so like, you know, based off of the time and, um, invested, you know, in, in the value for setting, you know, whether it's, 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 appointments per month, like that time that's invested, you know, it, there's no call reluctance for setting appointments. You got to actually make the call at the scheduled appointed time. But I was like, Hey, I can commit to that. And I can get over that hurdle. Cause I know somebody's on the other end of the line, you know, planning to, to meet with me. Um, and so for me, it was just like, what can I do to move my business down the field? Um, and that was, you know, Total, total makes sense deal. If you can talk to 15 to 20 people in a month and it costs you $1,500 a month or um, whatever the, the, the cost is, like that's totally worth your time to put you in green time each and every week, each and every month. And, you know, honestly it makes you show up different. If you know you have appointments that are um, later on that day, you got to be on your game. You got to be like ready. And um, so I felt like, you know, that, that, that made sense for us. Yeah, it makes you feel like more dialed in, right? Because then you now start to see more of the value of each and every single appointment because it's an opportunity, right? Of like another at bat and potential like long term partnership. Right? Yep. And if you were if you were talking to someone who's like on the fence, right? They might have either like they're about to have a, a call with us to talk about our services, or like they've already talked to us, um, and they're now like kind of thinking about it, or like you know they're kind of on the fence. Like, what would you say to to that specific person? who might be thinking about it on the fence? Uh, I think maybe to just reiterate what it is that that I've said, I'm like, if you're going to make the calls and you're committed to making 40 calls every single week to book yourself 10 or 15 appointments, then maybe you should do that. But by and large, more than likely, you probably aren't um, willing or committed to do to do that consistently. And so leverage somebody else to do what you either haven't made the time for, won't make the time for, and just ha have an honest, you know, evaluation with yourself and say, hey, am, am I willing to do this or not? And is my time better used, you know, connecting with more customers, connecting with my current partners, and then continuing to like, hey, continue to keep growing my customer base 
one one phone call at a time, one conversation at a time. And um, you know, it if you're already, you know, booking for yourself 15 to 20 appointments, you probably don't need uh your team, but likely if you're having a conversation, it's because you're not and you realize that your business does need that. And so this could totally be a value to you and your business if you're willing to be committed and um, you know, invest in yourself and your business. Very well said. And I can like I can hear that there's a lack of a lot of experience. Like as you said, that like you mentioned 40 calls per day. And that's like some of the things that like I know for a lot of loan officers that kind of do want to like kind of do it themselves. Um, they don't kind of realize like how much it does, how much time and energy it does take to like produce even like one appointment. Um, especially with like someone who's like higher caliber, it does take a lot more follow-ups and and creating those appointments. So um, that was really, really good comment that you had mentioned. And yeah, so we'll, we'll end it off with that. Justice, again, I really, really do appreciate you. I know you're in the middle of your day there and you got a lot of things going on here. So I really do appreciate you hopping on, giving some honest feedback about, you know, what's been your experience working with Maverick. I, I really appreciate your time. You got it, man. Thanks for having me on. It was good to chat with you. Take care, man. I'm in. See ya.